This is the JRPG Weekly Update Hotline Voicemail Box. Please leave a message to be played on the air after the beep. Beep. When it comes to action RPGs or turn-based RPGs, it definitely depends on my mood, too. But uh, overall, I'd probably say turn-based, only because some action RPGs get a little monotonous and repetitive. Whereas turn-based, even when it's not that good, can still get cognitive and it's still fun. That being said, I'm really excited for uh, the second story. Star Ocean, the second story, is one of the first RPGs I've ever played. So I can't wait for that review. I'm super excited. I love the weekly update. Thanks, Derek. Does it work with tea? Yes, it does. And they ship internationally as well. Get yours in the link in the video's description. Honestly, though, at this point, I'm just shilling these things for laughs because I've sold like five. I, I, I'm not getting rich off of mugs and t-shirts, but I mean, really, I do have some t-shirts available if you were interested in the link in the video's description but you know what aside from shilling out my own merch we've got some important news to talk about today now today's top headline doesn't really come from a current video game that's in development it's not a gaming company even really that we're talking about today and it's not even the nintendo switch mini which or the switch Lite. but we will talk about that later on and we will talk about other upcoming games and everything later on in today's video but before we get to that the real headline that i wanted to talk to you guys about today is the earthbound that could have been and what i'm talking about here has nothing to do with earthbound 64. i mean honestly everybody here probably already knows by heart the story the sad tale of earthbound 64 and and still pine for what it could have been of course with the demise of the nintendo 64 dd expansion so too died the 3D Earthbound that was in development. Uh, many ideas from this game did eventually get put into use and the Mother 3 that we got in 2006, or we didn't get it, but uh, Japan got it. However, before this version of Mother 3 that we did get uh, was in even in development, somebody else had actually put in a bid to work on a new entry in the Mother series. Yasuyuki Hone, I think that's how you say his name, had worked on Chrono Trigger, Xenogears, Chrono Cross, Xenosaga Episode 1, and was in the process of working on Baten Kaitos in various art and directing roles, and he pitched an idea to Shigesato Itoi and to uh, Satoru Iwata that unfortunately did not get picked up. He pitched this idea to Nintendo to create a craft kind of version, this concept of Mother 3 that was made from cloth and felt, and he kept a lot of the concept artwork that he made from this felt and ended up pitching it to, uh, to these guys over at Nintendo. And while it didn't get picked up, the original artwork is still really interesting and survived all this time, and he just recently posted it onto Twitter along with a nice little story talking about... Um, you know, the time that he pitched this idea to Nintendo and worked with Satoru Iwata and getting to talk to Shigesato Itoi about this potential idea. Uh, and it's kind of a, just a really neat little story about Iwata and Itoi and, and what could have been. He posted all of this to Twitter. This is obviously in Japanese, but if you want to read the full kind of story that they translated, Kotaku actually has a really, really nice article that I recommend you check out. Uh, I'll link to it in the video's description. And that's just sort of uh, the cool thing. Also, speaking of somebody who's working at Monolith Soft right now, uh, the next real big headline that I wanted to talk to you guys today about is Monolith Soft's profits are soaring. Uh, they've actually nearly doubled. They made $1.28 million in profits last year, but this year's profits are already at $2.5 million. And that's American dollars. That's not, that's not yen. That means that they've like, they've doubled their profits. Now, obviously that's really exciting for fans of Xenoblade because Xenoblade is a huge part of why they are doing so well right now. Uh, and this obviously opens the door for more extravagant games in the future. This kind of makes you wonder what they could do with this nearly $4 million that they've, you know, just got now that they didn't have only two years ago. What could they possibly have in store for us with the next Xenoblade game or 
Heck, maybe they're gonna go and buy back the the Xenogears IP from Square Enix. I mean, it's not like they're using it, right? So that would be pretty dang cool. But that's just speculation. We have no idea what they've got up their sleeves. But at any rate, if you like the Xenoblade saga, you should be excited for this because this pretty much guarantees that the Xenoblade is going to be a continuing series for a good long while. Now, I did say that we're going to eventually talk about the Nintendo Switch Lite. And obviously this has nothing to do with RPGs. But there are a lot of RPGs on the Nintendo Switch. And the Nintendo Switch actually happens to get more games than any other console every week. I would know because I check every week. The Nintendo Switch gets about twice as many games as the Xbox One every week, and about 50% uh, more than the PlayStation 4. <sighs> and, well, the reason that you should care about this is, if you want a Nintendo Switch and you don't already have one, you don't necessarily have to get the Switch Mini, it, or the Switch Lite. I mean, it's, it's important though, because it is only two-thirds of the cost of the original Switch at just $200. That's hundred dollars savings we can math <laughs> but this is also going to likely lower the cost of secondhand switches on the secondhand market the original switches a lot of people who already love their switch really only use it in docked mode and would really prefer something more portable so when this launches here before too long what's going to happen i think a lot of people are going to start trading in their original switches into the GameStops. Um, assuming GameStop still exists, they're going to start selling these things off in order to finance their purchase of the Switch Mini or the Switch Lite. I need to need to get that in my head. Switch Lite. <laughs> yeah, you can't just turn it off like a light switch. So what's going to end up happening is that a lot of the people who already have a Switch are going to be purchasing another Switch and they are going to be selling off their old Switches so what's going to happen with used switches? The supply is going to go up and the demand for them is going to go down as people are starting to buy the switch lights. Basic principles of economics here. You can probably put this together yourselves. The cost of secondhand switches should go down as a result of this. So that's why you should be excited for this. If you don't already have a Switch, getting a secondhand one on the cheap should be doable within within the next year, I'd say. You can probably get them for 150 125 I don't know, maybe. Could happen. So keep your ears peeled, your eyes open, and keep your eyes out for the good deals that could be coming up down the road. Now, aside from the secondhand market, this is also, you know, big important news of itself. The console is going to be coming in teal, yellow, and gray colors. It will not feature HD rumble or any ability to dock and to uh, connect to a television. It will have an increased battery life, and because the display is slightly smaller at the same resolution, it will have an increased pixel density on the actual Switch console itself. This is going to launch on September 20th, although a special edition Pokemon Sword and Shield version of this will launch on November 8th alongside Pokemon Sword and Shield. So with those headlines out of the way, we can start talking about some new games that were just announced. And this one comes from Falcom. It's actually a couple of PSP titles that are going to be getting re-released over on the PlayStation 4. Legend of Heroes Zero no Kiseki and Legend of Heroes Ao no Kiseki. Neither of these games were previously released in the West, though we did have some Legend of Heroes PSP titles get released. These two never came stateside. This is important because here's a quote from Falcom here. They said, So what we want to do as a company, what we are actually starting to prepare for, is to be able to bring both of these games to modern consoles. So right now, it's still in the very early stages. There's not much to be said about it. But as we do this, and as those plans become a little more solidified, we would like to absolutely start talks with foreign publishers and things that will get the conversation going to bring these games finally out to fans here in the West. So while nothing is official, it sounds like these games are definitely being ported to the PS4 over in Japan, and they're very interested in bringing them here to the States as that happens, but it's still very early on. Also, Yokai Watch 1 is getting an HD remaster on Switch. The game was originally released on the 3DS, and 
Again, this also does not necessarily mean we'll be getting it here in the United States. However, it seems like we've been getting most of the Yokai Watch games here in the States, and with an already existing translation that they have from the original release on 3DS, I think that a Western release is pretty likely because that's a huge part of the investment right there already out of the way. Now, the planned release for the Japanese version is in September 20th, alongside the Switch Lite. And we have some updates for some localizations and uh, release date updates. So Greedfall got a new trailer. This is a Western style action RPG that looks like it's set in like the 1700s or so. Kind of like they, they're wearing what looks like colonial garb to me. Um, now this trailer reveals a release date of September 10th of 2019. And it is coming to PlayStation 4, PC, and to Xbox One. And we have another Western RPG to talk about here. The Bard's Tale 4 Director's Cut has a new trailer as well with this release date. It is releasing digitally on August 27th of this year and physical copies will be released on September 6th of this year. It is coming also to PC, PS4, and to Xbox One. In other news, we've got East 9 received an updated trailer today. Their new trailer shows off some in-game combat and also some in-game cutscenes. And it's expected to launch here on PlayStation 4 on September 26th in Japan. Again, no English localizations have been announced. And while the game does not appear to really harness the full power of the PlayStation 4 at this time, it still does look like it's going to be a ton of fun to play. And Atelier Ryza also got a new trailer. This new Atelier game, from what I've seen, appears to be bringing in interest from new audiences who weren't already fans of the Atelier series. The game does feature a more modern design aesthetic and appears to be utilizing a new engine, among other head-turning assets that are invigorating the fan base. The new trailer features in-game combat, the titular Ryza exploring the land within the game, huge tracks of land, and also the world looks pretty good too. Atelier Ryza will be launching October 29th here in the United States and on November 1st in Europe. It is coming to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and to PC. And in Super Derek news, my playthrough of Star Ocean The Second Story is going really well over on Twitch. I'm about uh, 15 hours or so hours into it. I've been kind of going at it a little bit slowly. But, you know, if you want to come check it out, definitely do. There are going to be links to my Twitch channel down in this video's description. And also last week, when I wasn't looking, my six year anniversary here on YouTube snuck up behind me and surprise. Yeah, six years on YouTube already. Who would have thunk it? Time really flies when you're when you're getting old. <laughs> but as a celebration for my six years here on YouTube, I'm going to be live streaming a live Q&A right here on YouTube again. This one's not going to be on Twitch. So I'm going to be doing that on Friday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. Central Time. I will set up a reminder, a, a scheduled live stream, so you guys can set reminders on YouTube if you would, you know, like to do that as well. If you've got interest in, you know, hearing me answer questions or asking questions, definitely show up and we can just, you know, hang out and keep it casual. Also, for new games that are coming out this week, we have Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. The Black Order. This is a, a Marvel comic book based action RPG that is coming exclusively to Nintendo Switch this week. Arch Lion Saga, another 16-bit inspired Kemco RPG is coming to Nintendo Switch. This game is already available on iOS, however. And then 1980X. It's not an RPG, but it's a super cool looking pixel art a uh, love letter to arcades of the 90s or the, the 80s rather and also if you're at all interested in you know what i'm showing right here this this beautiful trailer definitely go check out the review by my my friend here the dolly pop guy i don't get enough opportunities to plug this guy's channel solid solid friend and solid youtuber definitely go check out his review there's there's a link right there click that link to go check out his video. And for this week's question of the week is related to my upcoming live Q&A. My question to you is, what question would you like me to answer on my live stream? And also be sure to read through the comments that other people have posted here and 
be sure to, you know, thumbs up or like the ones that you would like to have answered because the most popular questions are more likely to get more airtime dedicated to responding to them during the live stream. So with all of that said, that pretty much wraps things up for this week. Remember kids, stay in school and play your RPGs. I'm Super Derek and this has all been news to me.